In this video, I'm going to show you a really simple workflow that I made for a site that I maintain to delete bot users. And as a little bit of context, you can imagine that I've got this one table where there's a username, also an email. There's a timestamp for when the user signed up, and that's when the row got created in this table. And there is also this one extra column, the active column, that is an indication of whether or not the user is active. So you can imagine the user signs up, but never really confirms the email then the user is never set to active. The really nice thing about this, by the way, is that I can also take whatever active user and if I need to flag them or kick them off the site for whatever reason, I can very easily just trigger that without having to worry about any cascading effects. If the user had some comments or some tables depend on that row for whatever reason, then the site won't break, but I can declare a user to be inactive. But anyway, for our intents and purposes, what I just noticed is that there were a lot of inactive users and there was a creation date, there was also an email. But in particular, I noticed that there was this one username, Alice, that just appeared a whole lot. This username appeared once, but it also appeared for many different email addresses, all of which were created around the same time, and they were all inactive. So that just smells of bot behavior, right? And I felt like cleaning up. All of these users were inactive, so it feels fine to just remove those rows. But at the same time, it also feels dangerous to really automate this. In this case, it would definitely feel better to automate as much as possible, but to still do the final sign-off manually. So what I want to do is I want to take this user table, I want to filter it down such that I only have suspicious users, and then I want to have some sort of an interface that'll just let me confirm before automating. And this is also an exercise I want to repeat, so it's not necessarily a one-off. I probably want to do this every quarter or so. And as I started thinking about it, it also dawned on me that this is something that's pretty easy to do inside of Marimo because you can just write a little bit of ORM code, combine that with a widget, and you've got a workflow that you can repeat. So what I wanna do in this video is show you how I made this, how it works, and how you might be able to build similar things for yourself. Okay, so I'm in a Remo right now, and this first cell just has a little bit of boilerplate to make sure that I can connect to the ORM of the Django app. My site is running Django, that's not necessarily a very important detail, but it's good to know that there is a little bit of boilerplate, Check the link in the show notes on how this works exactly if you're a Django user. But the main thing that really matters is that in the end, I have this list of inactive, never logged in users over here. And what I can do is I can take that list of users, turn that into a dictionary format, and then pass it on to Polars to maybe do some light analysis. And in this particular case, one thing that immediately jumps out, right? There are a bunch of usernames listed over here, but I've also got this date that you've joined. And there's this one feature that I really do like about Marimo's data frame renderer, is that you do get this nice little summary on top over here. And one thing that immediately just jumps out is that if I look at this distribution of dates, there is this one date, or at least it seems like it, there's this one region of time over here when there's a lot of people joining that don't even log in. This is also partially reflected in the user ID, which is just an integer to make it unique. And if I were to summarize it per date, I also see the same pattern. And another thing you can also do, by the way, and I'm just mentioning this because it's a feature people sometimes forget about, there is this button at the bottom over here, which you can click. And this allows you to get a nice little summary per column. So if you're looking to maybe zoom in on some patterns, this is something that's super useful. And another thing is you can hit this button over here and then you get the code to make this chart yourself as well. In this case though, I'm just gonna keep it relatively simple. I'm just gonna group over the date column over here and if I were to just calculate the length and then sort descending, then yeah, you can definitely see that the end of April in this year, for whatever reason, there's a lot of people signing up and then not doing anything with the site. So. What I am comfortable saying when I just glance at this is that there's this one month, April 2025, and let's just look at all of those users and those feel particularly safe to maybe go ahead and delete. Now, the main reason for taking the time to explain this is not so much that you always need this, but it is just very nice to do a little bit of quick analysis before moving on to the next step, which is that we might start deleting some of these users. And for that, uh, what I'm going to use is this widget. Namely, I'm going to use the simple label widget that you can find in the MoLabel library. What's really nice about this widget is that it allows me to pass a list of dictionaries. So all the users that never logged in before, those RM objects, I'm turning that into a dictionary first. And then I have to give it a function that can render that. For this user, for this app, I'm just showing a simple card over here that confirms that the user never logged in. It is telling me the date that they joined. I'm also showing the username over here, but you could also add all sorts of other information that could make it easier for you to determine if this user really should be 
deleted. So maybe a profile picture, or in this case, the user really did nothing on the site, but maybe you want to do something where you confirm the user hasn't done anything in the last two years, or maybe show you the last couple of comments that the user had, things like that. The thing that I really love about this uh, widget in particular is that it's designed to also work nice with a gamepad. So I can just go ahead and say, yes, no, yes, no. Uh, you know, I can kind of click around. And as I do this, uh, annotations are added onto a list that is on the widget itself. So if I grab the variable that belongs to that widget, you can see that when I inspect the value of it, that I have this long list of annotations. And in there, you will notice I've got this example, which depicts the user. You can see the email and the name of the user. And then there's also a label that I attach. And this allows me to very quickly say, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. It is a really nice way of working. Now, the beauty of this setup is that I can go about this in more than one way. Right now, I'm just saying, look, if there's been no activity whatsoever, that might be a reason to look at a user. But you can also come up with other reasons. And just to do a little bit of brainstorming, right? Like, what are some good reasons to maybe double check a user and their profile? One thing I always like to calculate is their session behavior, especially if there are super long sessions out there. That can be a very good indication of bot behavior. A user can also just be very inactive for a long time. If the user hasn't done anything on your site for over three years, then, you know, that's also a good reason to check. But a thing that I always check myself personally is just weird characters or weird strings in general in the name. And the characters in particular that I really like to pay attention to are these open and close tags, as well as the string alert. And the final example I'm about to show you helps explain why. Okay, so no need to look at the email over here. Check this out. Look at this name. The name of this user apparently is image source equals X on error alert one. Well, there you go. This is probably a script key trying to insert some HTML, maybe with some evil JavaScript that I'll run on my site. Note in this case, by the way, this was a user that indeed did join and also had a actual login. Now this could have been automated, of course, but just checking for, oh, user never logged in is probably not going to be sufficient. You want to have multiple reasons to maybe filter people out. And this is also why I love doing this sort of work inside of a notebook. I have charts at my disposal, but I can also try out lots of different things. And what I'm showing you here really is the start of a workbook, I guess you could say, where every quarter or so, I'm just gonna check the sanity of my user table. There's always going to be some tomfoolery, and if you're gonna maintain a site proper, it's a good thing to just be aware of, because this is stuff you really don't wanna have happen on your site. Although it should also be said, if you have a somewhat more modern web framework, then of course you can expect tools to circumvent issues like this to uh, really damage the site, but still, you want to be aware of this. There are tons of script keys out there and having a little workbook that is really making it both more pragmatic and also frankly more fun for me to maintain a website on the side. So if you have use cases like this where, oh, you want to play around with the data a little bit more, do know that you can get an ORM to work nicely inside of a notebook. But alternatively, another thing that's also good to know is that you can also attach a data source directly. Remo has SQL support, so some of the cells can also talk SQL. And you can also just connect a Postgres instance or MySQL or whatever you use directly this way as well. So, so even if you don't want to use the ORM directly, you can also just use SQL and you can also use this to do some annotation, confirm, analyze, and then push updates to the database on your behalf. If you want to see more stuff like this, like and subscribe, and check the show notes of the video because they contain all the relevant links that you might be interested in. Thanks for listening.